Uh, let's turn uh, to uh, politics and uh, House uh, Republicans on the Oversight Committee are calling on their Democratic colleagues to provide more details about a series of trips taken to Mexico while staff were touring the border detention facilities. And uh, we're, we turn our attention now and say good morning um, uh, to uh, the head of the Department of Government at Tarleton State University, Dr. Nathaniel Cogley. Dr. Nathaniel, thank you so much for joining me here in Memphis. How are you, sir? I'm good. How are you today? Terrific. Thank you. I uh, so so I I knew and, and and we've seen a series of trips down to the border and photo and, and photo ops for for members of both parties of Congress, but apparently there's have been uh, accusations of just a little bit more of uh, Democrats uh, doing a little bit more than just looking around, but perhaps crossing the border and uh, doing some other things. What what are the accusations? Right. So back in January, President Trump announced that he would have a made in, uh, remain in Mexico policy so that uh, people who are waiting asylum hearings in the U.S. Uh, can wait in Mexico while they wait for those hearings to take place. And here, what we see here is some members of this committee uh, traveling across into Mexico on fact-finding missions. Um, Representative Jim Jordan, he's a ranking member on that committee, is questioning the intentions of these trips. I'm not sure within the committee process there's anything here because Elijah Cummings has already responded about the intention of the trips, but it raises an article from July about Representative Escobar, whose staff has purportedly done about 6,000 interviews with uh, immigrants waiting in Mexico, and that raises more concerns. But she's not a part of the committee. She just accompanied them on one trip. So it's a little back and forth, a little partisan. It highlights how different the parties are on immigration issues. You mentioned you mentioned uh, six uh, six thousand interviews. Are there accusations of coaching of of what to say to get in at, in to, at the U.S. border? Yeah, those accusations are targeted getting against Representative Veronica Escobar from the El Paso region, mm-hmm. um, and Jim Jordan raised this in his letter um, to Elijah Cummings. But um, I don't think he's they're going to find much in terms of the committee work. Sure. But the Escobar story is more interesting she's from that border community um but yeah that's some of the accusations that these trips aren't necessarily just pure fact-finding missions that um there could be the accusation of course and it's not proven but that there could be interference you know more in federal executive and law enforcement and it's kind of interesting to see members of the legislative branch uh, become so uh, interested in the enforcement and the executive side of these policies I think what's also interesting is how President Trump has had much more success on this border situation through his foreign policy efforts rather than through domestic politics. You know, we have a divided government. It's hard to get domestic things done. And we also have a court system where certain injunctions are put in place before policies have to work their way through the system. That's interesting because, uh, and Dr. Nathaniel Cogley joining us uh, this morning on on Memphis Morning News, it's interesting because I've seen tweets uh, from President Trump thanking Mexico for their assistance in in helping reduce the number of uh, of uh, crossings at the border, and it, it's it that's something that I didn't think that I would ever see. I'd like to circle back just real quickly about Jim Jordan and this committee. What what do you think is his end game in in his letter to Elijah Cummings? Um, was it to simply shine a light on what he thinks might be going on down there, or does he or is he looking to press further? on 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 the uh trips into mexico oh i don't think this is the end game jim jordan's going to continue to be a very uh, vocal member of the republican caucus in the house Um, he's from a very conservative district and he's from such a secure district for him that he's taken on a lot of leadership responsibilities for the republican caucus and of course they're in the minority now so he's a ranking member on this committee but uh, he was sec- he was runner up for speaker of the house last time right. and so he continues to do things that are in the interest of the republican caucus in the congress and not necessarily tailored to his home district for reelection as he feels very comfortable there um so this is just jim jordan continuing to be vocal and outspoken and to challenge uh, the other side and, and the way that they're running certain committees and the way and he's a big defender of President Trump and a lot of President Trump's initiatives. So he's kind of uh, questioning the motives behind the Democratic staff uh, going across the border to, uh, you know, to, to question the policy, the remain in Mexico policy. 
Uh, just a real quick 25-point bonus question, if you don't mind, Doctor. Today, polls are now open in North Carolina. Is this one, it, it, this one, from what everybody says, is on a, a, a basically a knife's edge right now? What what could go down on some of these house races um, in in North Carolina? President Trump making a trip last night. How important is North Carolina to the president? Well, North Carolina is going to be an important state for him. He won it by a small margin, so it's another state that's going to be in play this cycle. I'm not sure that the fate of this House district is going to be much more than a a, a single seat in the House. I think the Democrats are going to be able to keep the House, but Trump's probably a two-to-one favorite here for re-election. And the reason that I'm not really concerned how this special election goes is that this is more of a midterm type election. The Mm -hmm. president's not on the ballot. And usually turnout will really increase once the president is on the ballot. So in midterm elections, the opposition party does very well. And that's why the Democrats are able to compete in this special election. But once Trump gets on the ballot, as we go into the 2020 vote, uh, you'll see turnout very strong on both sides of the aisle. All right. Hey, doctor, thank you so much for joining me on Memphis Morning News. It has been an absolute pleasure. And and I hope to talk to you again really, really soon. Thank you. Thanks so much. All right, there's Dr. Nathaniel Cogley from Tarleton State. That's in Texas.